This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 381, an excerpt from the book Careergasm, Find Your Way to Feel Good Work by Sarah Vermont, and I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator. Happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, and welcome back to OLD, Optimal Living Daily, the podcast where I simply read to you from the best blogs and books I can find, covering topics like personal development, productivity, minimalism, and more. And today's one of those special days where I'm reading to you from a book. These are always fun because I end up giving away the book too, which I'll do tomorrow. So if you want a chance to win it, make sure you're on my mailing list. That's my weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com. I'll pick someone random and then email them and tell them that they won, simple as that. But you need to be on my mailing list before midnight tonight to be entered to win this book, which is A Careergasm, Find Your Way to Feel Good Work by Sarah Vermont. If you feel stuck in your job, this book is for you. Sarah's a career coach who's written for Forbes, Entrepreneur, Huffington Post, and many more publications, and she helps others find feel-good work. You can find her online at careergasm.com, and there's a lot of info there, how to work with her, more about her book, all that stuff. And I'm gonna read the first part of the first chapter, so let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book Careergasm, Find Your Way to Feel Good Work by Sarah Vermont. I don't know what I want. People say one of the hardest things to do in the pursuit of a happy career is figuring out what kind of work you actually want to do. I agree with that, kind of. In fact, I'd say it's something more like this. One of the hardest things to do in the pursuit of a happy career is admitting to yourself what kind of work you actually want to do. There's a big difference between not knowing what you want and not admitting what you want. Most of the people who come to me for career coaching feel lost. They don't know what they want. At least they think they don't know what they want. But more than half of the time, most of the time, the problem has nothing to do with knowing. It's the fear associated with desire. There's nothing more terrifying than admitting what you actually want, especially if you think you can't have it. For most, the problem isn't that you don't know what you want. It's that you're scared shitless to want it. Admitting that you want something means doing something about it. It means you're either going to be on the hook for making it happen or going to knowingly let yourself down. And I don't even have to tell you which of those two outcomes is tougher on you in the long run. Saying you don't know what you want is easier because it makes you the poor schmuck who's in the dark. But I would totally pursue my passion if I only knew what it was. Is that really true? I'd be willing to bet that on some level, there's a very wise part of you that knows exactly what you want. Some people live their whole lives trying to hide from their own truth. Don't go through life willingly playing the part of the poor schmuck. Here's what I'm talking about. Banker, I've got to get out of this godforsaken profession, but I don't know what I want to do. Me, what kind of work do you think would make you happy? Banker, I don't know. Me, activating stern librarian glare. Is that really true? You have no idea what would make you happy? Banker, yes, I don't know. Me, Radio silence and raised eyebrow, the facial equivalent of calling double bullshit. Banker. Okay, I've actually always wanted to be a brewmaster, but I can't do that. Bingo. If this resonates with you, then honey, your problem is not that you don't know what you want, it's that you're afraid to want it. And those are two very different things. Think the banker turned brewmaster example is far-fetched? Think again. A client of mine made that exact transition. And he did it several years into his profession and while raising two young boys. He even took a crappy minimum wage job at a brewery one summer so he could learn the industry. He was paying the nanny more per hour to watch the kids than he was making. If you're afraid to let yourself want what you want because you think you can't have it, just remember the banker turned brewmaster. Consider the following question and answer it honestly. Are you really as lost as you think you are or are you just afraid? Maybe that question feels like a relief to you. Maybe you're thinking, OMG, deep down, I do know what I want, but I don't know how to get it. I'm terrified. Or maybe that question really pisses you off. Maybe you're thinking, listen, lady, you have no idea how much I've struggled with this. I really don't know what I want, and I'm trying really f***ing hard to figure it out. If this is you, hang in there. I'm going to help you return to the part of yourself that knows. If you truly don't know what you want, chances are you lost touch with your desire somewhere along the way. At some point in time, you push that desire way down to a place where you're now able to tell yourself convincingly that you don't know what you want. Maybe you did this after college or when you started a family, maybe earlier. Maybe you pushed that desire down when you were an anxious teenager worried about your future or when you were an obedient child trying your best to show your parents love and gratitude no matter the cost. 
You may have pushed that desire down so long ago that you don't even know how to access it anymore, but it's there. And if you're willing, I can help you find it. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, Career Gasm, Find Your Way to Feel Good Work by Sarah Vermont. That's so true. It's something we need to think about more, especially as we get older, because it's like the older we get, the more stuck and convinced we are that we can't get out. Or worse, we convince ourselves that we're doing what we have to be doing. But I can tell you there is a way out. Once again, you can find her at careergasm.com. That's Sarah Vermont. And I'm actually going to be giving away my copy of her book, this one that I'm holding right now, to a random person on my mailing list at midnight tonight, which is December 26th. So at midnight of December 27th, December 27th morning, someone will win this book. You just need to be on my weekly newsletter email list at oldpodcast.com. Enter your email address for that and to be in another raffle happening January 1st because I give away a book on the first of every month too. Again, that's all at oldpodcast.com. I'll keep this ending minimal. We didn't have Minimalist Monday today, but we probably will next week once the craziness of the holidays are over. Have a wonderful day. Happy Hanukkah again. Happy Kwanzaa again. And I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.